So hi everyone and welcome to this biome video podcast which is about a global um, conservation topic and we are going to talk about canned hunting. So I'm Emma. I'm Roby. <laughs> so yeah, thanks thanks for listening and we're going to start talking about canned hunting, which is a bit of a yeah. bit of a depressing a bit of a topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so I think the way we'll do this particular episode, just to try out a new format, do you want to give like an overview of what canned hunting is and why it's important? Um, And then we can, you know, discuss its effects and what we think the impact of canned hunting is on conservation. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So just as an overview of what canned hunting is, I don't think I was fully aware of what it was before doing, looking into it. Um, So basically it means breeding... It's predominantly with lions, so it's the breeding of lions or other large predators in captivity, which are then released um, into a fenced area where they can't escape, and then you have paying hunters who come in, and it's entirely just for the pleasure of kind of shooting an animal. They will then shoot this basically tame, habituated animal that is used to people, um, and yeah, it's... um. Um I imagine these hunters are largely Westerners from Europe and North America, I would imagine. Yeah. Is that correct? It's very few hunters. So this is predominantly a problem in South Africa, um, but there are very few South African hunters who are taking part in this practice. Um, and just to, it's entirely legal, um, which kind of baffles. It's entirely legal? Yep, it's legal. So it is current okay, that's weird. because it's counted as so I'll go into this a bit more, but because it's like a trophy, if you shoot, say, a lion and then bring it back, it is currently legal in the UK today to bring in a trophy that you've shot in South Africa of a canned hunted lion. Really? Yes. Okay. And so what are what are the what are how does this how is this any different to trophy hunting where, you know, that well, there was a dentist who went out and shot Cecil the lion. How is that? How is canned hunting different from trophy hunting? Because in my head at the moment, they're they're somewhat similar, no? There, there is quite a lot of overlap. Um, I think the main difference with trophy hunting is that it will be wild animals. So it's still the okay. idea that you're out on, it's mainly out on foot. You're stalking it part of the... The big appeal of the of trophy hunting is that it's wild animals, whereas canned hunting is exclusively sort of captive bred animals, um, and so they're essentially tame in this regard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. tame, and often the hunt will take place um, sort of on top of a vehicle. Even they, the hunters don't even get out of the vehicle. Um, it will just be on top. The animal is often drugged or baited um, and tame. So it raises so many ethical issues, um, and that yeah. that's the argument. There's, we, we'll talk about this maybe a bit more at the end. But with trophy hunting, conservationists argue that it could play a role in financing some conservation aspects where ecotourism and things like that aren't possible. Whereas with canned hunting, it's just a no-no. Like it, most people agree this should just be banned completely. Yeah, I mean, even you know. If I had my way, I'd take all the humans out of the equation and just have... Everywhere would be national parks. But obviously that can't happen. And, you know, I accept that in some situations, trophy hunting can have benefits in, you know, really remote areas where, you know, all the money is quite um, tightly regulated and tightly funneled immediately into conservation efforts. I, I can see that as having... You know, it's it's not ideal and it's not it doesn't leave a particularly good taste in your mouth. But I think, you know, there probably are situations where trophy hunting might have a place in modern conservation strategy. I think the argument with can hunting, the reason people, are, you know, are proponents of it, I think, isn't there argument that, OK, well, if we have this captive populations of lions that's going to be hunted, then 
the wild population won't be affected. There won't be any hunting on the wild population because it'll be easier and cheaper to come do this this captive population. That that that's ha- that's what the argument is, right? Yeah. So from the side of the canned hunters or the people who are running these lion farms, that is their argument that they would use. Um, but looking at sort of facts and, and figures and things like that, having these lion farms, there's about 170 of them in South Africa. Oh my God, um, that's loads. Yeah. And we'll go into the, li- the lion farms themselves are just awful. Um, but you would have thought maybe if you had these captive populations that that would relieve the pressure on the wild ones. But that's not been the case. African lion populations have declined massively they've declined i think it's by let me just see if i can find the figures so i get this right um 80 i heard 80 yeah they've declined by i want to say it's 80 percent um in the last couple of this is it 80 percent in the last 20 years wow so this is in the time frame where these canned hunting farms have expanded massively massively so in south africa there are now more lions in captivity in these lion farms than there are wild ones which that is kind of shocking yeah you see that kind of raises the issue that there is there is no positive no positive to the lions in this situation because for example in florida you've got quite a few alligator farms which farm these alligators in order to um, at a certain age, kill them and then sell the skin for leather and, you know, the teeth for necklaces and stuff. Um, and I, I can only speak of Florida because it's the only wo- only place I know where it actually has worked somewhat. Yeah. So illegal poaching of wild alligators has plummeted in the last, I think it was the last 30 years since alligator farming became a big thing. Um, Florida now has quite a healthy population of alligators. Still under threat, but 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 larger than it was before these these farms came in and so in that situation i can see positives to that and i am not particularly against the farming of alligators and i think with lions because obviously there's a massive illegal wildlife parts trade if you farmed lions a captive population you farmed them killed them at a certain age and then sold the parts to for instance the chinese medicine market i would actually have less of a problem with that than I do with canned hunting. In term, so you wouldn't be opposed to having them in captivity and then selling the parts. I wouldn't be aff- I wouldn't be opposed to farming them and then selling the parts to the to places where there is a demand for those well, things. This, because this if is... you're selling those parts, that would alleviate the pressure, I think, on wild individuals if you can sell them at a cheaper price. You would have thought that, but this is so. This is actually happening. But so it's not oh, the really? case. Oh, really? Okay. So oh. <laughs> um, you've got these lion farms. And so not only is many of the males that are being used yeah. for can hunts, the females are going on to be basically breeding machines. They're taking mm. the cubs away really soon after they're born, bottle rearing them. So sort of humans are raising them. Um, and then the cubs, oh, it's a very messed up industry. So the cubs are then used for tourist petting and volunteers so they are advertising these farms on conservation sort of organizations and saying you can be a a, a mum to tiger uh, not tiger to <laughs> there is a link with hey, tigers another large pantherine species yeah <laughs> there is a link with tigers i'll get to in a minute um but they're advertising it as like you can hand rear them they don't have their mum and they're going to be released back into the wild so it's so covered up but it's the yeah. idea that so the cubs are for all this petting and it's something like three hundred and seventy pounds a week that people are paying oh God. to be a mum to these lion cubs, um, and then when they die or not even when they die, they now have permits for these lion farms that they can euthanize the lions for for the skeleton because there is now a demand for lion bones because tigers have been driven to extinct or driven to the brink of and, extinction but has that had any effect it has that caused less wild lions to be killed because if that was the case i could almost think about obviously the massive massive ethical issues but if it was the case that selling the bones of these lions did decrease pressure on wild populations it would at least be worth thinking about but is is that not the case i think in some localized areas possibly 
Um, but the argument that um, some conservationists are making is that it's just putting a value, like a, a monetary value on top of every lion's head. The fact that you've I now see. got the demand for these bones. And also there's some aspects of Chinese medicine that say that the bones of wild lions are more potent. Oh, of course. Yeah, exactly. Of course. How did we not see this coming? Okay, so what works with alligators in Florida may not necessarily work with lions in South Africa is what you're saying. Yeah, as as okay. I've seen, at least from what I know of the industry, it's had very little, because it's so kind of disconnected from the wild population, it's, it's basically farming them like we're farming battery chickens and it's yeah. actually so it's actually dealt with so um wild lions in south africa are actually dealt with it's by the sort of environmental department and then the captive bred ones are dealt with by the agricultural um <laughs> or, like industry so that's they're they're being treated like as if we're raising cattle or goats or yeah. chickens so there's very to, in my mind they're so disconnected that having these yeah. farms is having virtually no positive impact on wild populations and that that's interesting you mentioned about that disconnect because obviously you know a kind of a fallback argument that that the canned hunting industry has to legitimize themselves is that they say oh well this is a reserve of of individuals that if we lose all our wild lions we still have them here we can then release them out into the wild and frankly i find that to be absolutely Okay, I'm not going to swear. Absolutely wrong and completely, completely erroneous in that if you're raising, if you're, if you're hand raising lions by hand and you're taking them away from the mothers and they're not out there hunting, they're not learning these life skills, they're not learning that you shouldn't poke the buffalo and, you know, you can eat the warthog, they're not functionally lions anymore and they're essentially just lions that behave like dogs and so... Yes, they have genetic value, although I would imagine there's no regulation of a stud book in making sure that the genetic lines are, you know, diverse. But you can't, you couldn't release these lions back into the wild. They're not lions anymore. They've lost all the behavioural... You know, we see this problem in zoos yeah. occasionally, quite often, actually. They're, they're no longer functionally behaviourally lions and their genetics are now at risk because I imagine they're going to be inbred for the yeah. the biggest manes and we're going to selectively breed bloodlines together for the most tameness. Um, so I, I don't know. I always think that argument is complete bollocks. Sorry. <laughs> no, it, it really is. And I think there's... It's a hard line because you've got a lot of people who do genuinely care about animals, but in their minds, they're like, let's release them all. Let's just set them all free. You you can't do that. Because um, like yeah, you were those mentioning- those lions can't be let no. free. And there's been lots of genetic studies on these lions. They are so dysfunctional, for lack of a better word. Like they, and also the lion bone trade has really not helped this because now all that's needed is for the lions to get to the adult stage so that the skeleton- can be exported for lion bones. So there's no concern for their nutrition of the cubs. There's no concern for veterinary, um, any conditions that they might have. So you've got sort of these stunted lion cubs with huge health problems, which are just being raised to get big enough so that they can take the skeleton. So you couldn't even release them, even if they did have a less tame genetic aspect. They can't walk like they're, it's just, yeah. Hor horrible, horrible conditions. And not to mention, you know, the threat to to the lions, but also the threat to people. I mean, dogs kill more people every year than lions do every year. And these are dogs. And now we've essentially turned these lions into dogs. And we're letting people walk around with them and pet them. These lions, which are, you know, physically and neurologically unstable. Yeah. And that is a massive health risk. If dogs can pe kill people, imagine what a lion can do if you're walking next to it and you're scratching it the wrong way yeah. and it's malnourished and psychologically unstable. And to even consider, to even, to, to, to even say with a straight face that in the name of conservation, you're intending at some point to release these lions into the wild is a massive health and safety risk. Not least for the fact that the moment they see a person, they're going to come up and get in all sorts of proximity and that is incredibly dangerous with an apex predator yeah it absolutely is and there have been 
several cases now of lion farms where people have been mauled, people have been severely attacked, and it's like, do you you can't blame the lion? They are, they are wild animals and we are treating them like cows. You you can't just do that and expect them to expect it to not have consequences. But it's what's be there's a film, it's a documentary that came out called Blood Lions. And it's about... Uh, I've heard of it. Have you yeah. seen it? I, have, I, I can only it. watch the trailer because you have to pay for it, but I'm trying to get access to it because it is about the the can hunting industry and just how covered up everything is. So the yeah. fact that they, they interviewed um, several paying volunteers who generally in the best sort of mindset, they really thought they were doing the right thing. They really thought that they were going to be able to help these lions go back into the wild. And it was only when they were there that they red flags started to come up and they really started to realise, no, this is not OK. They're, they're not going to be released. Um, there's no. And, you know, I think I think that personally is my biggest issue with canned hunting. The fact that it passes itself off as conservation when it's not. And conservation at the moment needs all the money and all the support and all the volunteers it can get. And if you've got canned hunting organisations passing themselves off, as legitimate conservation that's a big issue because it's 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 probably easier for them to do so because you know walking with a lion it's sexy you get a photo which you can take to your instagram and you know it's 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 an attractive business to go and see these lions and if you haven't heard about what conservation really is that can look really appealing whereas actually lion conservation is okay figuring out how do we mitigate lion and livestock human conflict issues it's conserving large areas of habitat it's disease control it's national park establishment it's you know things which aren't as flashy and so i think my my biggest issue with canned hunting is the fact that it it monopolizes all a a lot of the money that comes into the conservation sector and is and is dire dearly needed elsewhere i think is my biggest problem because i think the thing is a lot of these paying volunteers and tourists they would not want to be a part of that if they knew that the cubs they were petting and taking pictures with were then going to be released into an enclosed fence, no means of escape. So physically, they've got fences that they can't get out. Mentally, they're habituated to humans. It's like this. Sorry if this is distressing to some people, but I want to put this image in your head. So it's like releasing your pet dog into a fenced area and someone with a gun just shooting it. This is no different to that. They are petted by humans, they are used to humans, they are bottle fed by humans and then are being released to be shot. And I don't, like yeah. you're saying, there needs to be that openness with because conservation needs to, sort of people need to be aware what's happening, the good side and also what is unethical conservation and just, yeah, wrong. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I think we shall we shall close this particular video podcast with us putting our big stamp onto canned hunting and saying this is unethical conservation. It's not actually conservation. It's ineffective, unethical, and immoral, and no one should do it. And it should be gotten rid of, or at the very least, subject to incredibly tight regulation and legislation. To my mind, no, absolutely. I think it definitely needs, in my mind, kind of banning. Um, but like you say, tighter controls and just openness as well about the industry. This is why we wanted to talk about this to maybe people aren't aware. It, I wasn't aware about this um, a while ago. Um, and yeah, just sort of to anyone who is looking at wildlife experiences or wanting to volunteer or pet an animal, really look into it because it's not just a case of take a cute cuddly pitch with an animal. There's often a backstory to that. If you if if there's ever a conservation opportunity where you're touching a lion, that is 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 not reputable. I mean, perhaps if you're a, if you're doing a veterinary conservation thing in the Maasai Mara and you have to inject it and release it, fair enough. But if there's ever something which says walk along the side of this lion, you're going to take it for a walk and pet it, that's a red flag. Yeah. That does not contribute to to lion conservation in the wild. And just so yeah, we hope. Sorry, no, no, go on. Just a quick, quick shout out. So there are organisations that are doing a good job. So there's one called Lions Rock, which was an ex-lion breeding farm and has now been turned into a sanctuary, rescuing 
big cats so tigers lions and other things like that from this industry and they're very strict on limited human contact and you kind of see them and they raise awareness so there are some good things going on and two other places i know of just off the top of my head doing wonderful work uh in africa in particular especially east africa uh the zambian carnival program in zambia does excellent work conserving lions in the field no touching involved uh african parks network do a lot of work conserving lion populations across national parks and implementing wildlife corridors between them and the Leibniz Institute does a lot of work were on the genomics of lions and making sure that captive individuals aren't being bred with it with with each other. So yeah, there are positives. There are good people to get involved with and donate to if you feel that you can, um, and if you're passionate about lion conservation. So we hope that you've uh, in, maybe enjoyed is the wrong wrong word. We hope that you've learned something from this video podcast. We certainly did researching it. We had I had no idea about the perils of cant hunting beforehand. So we are going to sign off there. We will catch you next time. Um, make sure to check out uh, Grizzly Bournemouth on YouTube and Biome by Grizzly on Instagram. And if you'd like to check us out on Instagram, we are Roby Watkinson Wildlife and... Um, Emma Hodson Wildlife. So yeah, just um, stay tuned for more updates about latest video podcasts and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye.